I V M. A hundred bucks. That's all it takes to begin your journey with Bitcoin and Ethereum. No, really. With CoinSwitch, you can start investing in over a hundred cryptocurrencies with just hundred rupees. On top of that, there are zero charges for deposits and withdrawals, so you can trade, buy, sell, however and whenever you want. All of this, plus their extremely intuitive interface, makes CoinSwitch the perfect app for beginners in the crypto space. But don't take my word for it. Just download CoinSwitch for free and try it out for yourself. If you'd like more information on cryptocurrencies, tune into a show about crypto with me, Rohan Joshi, my new adventure on IVM Podcasts. CoinSwitch, kuch to badlega. Hello, welcome to another awesome episode of IVM Likes. I am your host Antrik Stakkar. Joining me on this episode is my fellow producer Vishal Dubey from IVM. Hi, Vishal. How's it going, man? Hey, Antrik. All good, dear. Yeah. I awesome. guess I'm going to sound a bit weird today. No, don't worry about it. This, uh, this is this is what my voice is. Is what I'm scared of. <laughs> All right. So that's uh, Vishal. Thanks, so Vishal. Vishal for joining us. Joining Vishal and me on this episode is. How do you even describe this person? This person uh, is a veteran podcaster with the Sponge Podcast and Last Man Standing Podcasts. He has been in advertising for the last 35 years. He is a brand strategist. He's the founder of brandbuilding.com. And also, we just found out a huge pop culture nerd who likes Game of Thrones and sex education, both. Uh, please welcome the amazing Ambi Parmesan. <laughs> Hi, Ambi sir. How are you doing? Uh, hey, uh, Andrik. Hey, Vishal. Good to, good to be with you guys. You know, I feel... I mean, you guys are probably half my age, so good to feel young. <laughs> so we feel so inexperienced, and I feel very underqualified to be having this interview with you, or this uh, yeah. this episode, doing this episode with you. Uh, very cool. For our listeners, the this episode we're going to be talking about some of the controversial ads that have come about in uh, Indian media o- over the uh, during this lockdown and the pandemic period as well, and also before that because we had a history of a lot of. Uh, steamy ads that were deemed uh, too too hot for tv or uh, uh, suppo- ads that were supposedly the, not giving off the right message and were deemed not fit for tv then so we have a lot of that coming up on this episode with ambi parameswaran and vishal dube right after this break see you guys right after the short break a wise man once said traveling it makes you speechless then turns you into a storyteller Well, listen to such travel stories and experiences exploring India on the Musafir Stories with us, Saif and Faiza. Catch us on the IBM website, app, or wherever you get your podcasts from. And we're back. We're talking about some controversial ads in Indian TV. Let's start off with a simple question that Ambi sir and Vishal, I will like your both opinions on. Is do you think that uh, we can? As as a society in India and uh, as a world society as well, do you think that we can often lack a sense of humor or are quick to take things too seriously sometimes? I think uh, you know, as a as a society, I don't think we have too much of a sense of humor. Uh, unfortunately, we are we when you say humor, we we lapse into slapstick and uh, and the Shakti Kapoor and the Mahmood kind of humor. I don't think we have subtlety, uh, you know, humor, and uh, I don't think. Uh, but you know, I think we've had some great uh, advertising. As you you know, mind the humor uh, genre very well in India. A lot of Indian ads have been uh, you know using the humor uh, emotion to communicate their brand message. So to that extent, while we don't have, if you look at the top uh, hot movies which have come out in the last twenty thirty years, there are only a handful of humor uh, films. But there are in the last ten years there have been a growth in the humor genre even in Bollywood, uh, Bollywood. But otherwise, it's it's an odd Padosan, you know, and you know we still remember Padosan, which came out what fifty years ago, right? Yeah. So uh, also, I think it's uh, it could be because uh, it's very easy to get offended at comedy, and it's more difficult to get offended at something that is said seriously. Because you think, uh, because I think it becomes like, "Are how can you joke about this? You think that's funny? Yeah. You think that you think joking about this is funny?" So that could be, uh, in my opinion, could be a part of it. Yeah. Well, what do you think, Vishal? Yeah. Do you think uh, people are quick to get angry? Maybe. Uh, I mean, the response recently has been very quick. People uh, reacting angrily or taking it as a humor because of social media. Earlier, like if we look back in early two thousands. Uh, it was more of word of mouth thing 
that you know oh this fan did this oh these guys have you know almost no models on their cover page but lately because of social media like you know there have been hashtags which are been trending and you know i uh, this spreads like total viral of you know any ad which you see and lately the ads which i have grown up watching is like uh, lately even the comedy shows or you know whatever we look at it's more about of uh, comedy has uh, not like earlier like ambi sir mentioned shakti kapoor and you know mehboob making fun of them since but lately it has been more of making fun of the other person so uh, in order to make people laugh uh, it has been this like you know people have started like you know insulting someone in order to make uh, feel happy yeah. rather than taking joke on this i mean it has been also there but uh, it's not necessary that you know if you have to crack a joke or get that beat or punch uh, you have to necessarily insult that person it can't be black and white like you know this is right and this is wrong sometimes it has to be equal so do you sometimes think that if i wanted to i can get, i can basically get offended at anything in the sense i can get offended at the most mildest ad ever uh, which is just talking about like i don't know bisleri ka ad or something ke oh why are you drinking water like that or you're just still wasting plastic or for whatever reason you can get offended at anything so that leads me to the question do you think what we get offended at as a society tells us where we stand as a society as well as an advertiser if i am an advertiser i will first of all try and ignore all these trolls hmm. and i will wait Uh, till there is enough momentum, and then I'll start reacting if required. Because you know, like you said, anyone can take offense to anything, right? I mean, yeah. basically, you can take offense if you're using, uh, you know, pet bottles, and pet bottles are you know messing up the ocean and blah blah blah. So you should not. Now, come on, man. I mean, am I supposed to drink water from a tap in India? I mean, who's going to come and you know look after me if I fall ill? So there will always be people, you know, objecting to various things. You need to ignore a lot of that. stop and then say look i'm okay you know i will i will monitor this and only if it gets beyond a particular level of noise then i will even react to this if you trace the history uh, i mean well before you guys were born uh, in india we had only doordarshan as tv right i mean uh, it was it was only doordarshan doordarshan used to control uh, the television ads you know which were aired it was almost like a you know we will allow this we will not allow this we will Want you to edit this? You want you not. So in my book, which I wrote uh, six years ago, about new noodles, I've dedicated a chapter uh, in that book to this whole thing about uh, our sensitivity to ads. And in fact, one of the stories I talk about is a is an ad I, you know, my agency had created in 1985 uh, for a for a brand of sweetener called Sweetex, and and the jingle was very nice, made by you know Pralat Kakkar. it said no squeeze no wheeze no sugar in my coffee please it's a sweeter life without calories that was a jingle nicely done yeah we had a great model called uh, i think monica monica chaudhry who had that uh, enrolled in that and in one of the shots uh, where we said no squeeze no wheeze uh, we had her, her having an inch tape going around her navel and pulling the inch tape and and we could see her navel right so uh interestingly the storyboard was kind of approved by doordarshan when the final film was made they said sorry this is nudity we can't allow this this the navel showing is nudity <laughs> yeah, navel okay. nudity so okay. i was a i was the brand manager so i was told you have to find out what's happening so i went to delhi and went to the those days we used to call them the mandarins of mandi house so you go to mandi house and and i met this uh, you know i think director commercial or something and i said look sir you know we got the story board approved is it ha and then now we made the film and uh, you know you're not allowing it and you know those days vhs tape so i played the, the vhs tape to him and he said nahi nahi ye to allow nahi karenge hum uh, both nudity hai i said sir but you know yesterday i saw chaya geet and i saw the navel of jayaprada uh, shri devi and uh, anima malini wo to aap allow karte hain advertising mein kyun nahi allow nahi nahi wo alag hai hum film bhi ban karne wale so you know something i mean you can't yeah. argue with that guy right so finally i said sir kya karna hai he said ah baki theek hai aap ye shot nikal do uh, i said sir but ye reshoot karna padega i said he said bhai aap ko ye aapka problem hai mera problem nahi hai i am saying allow nahi karunga yeah. uh, doordarshan you cannot spoil the culture of india etc etc though culture of india they are being spoiled by you know sri devi dancing 
on on markas or whatever right yeah. uh, but you know so i said theek hai sir abhi kya kare so i went back to bombay i met i pralat said nahi yaar ye ek shot hai you know i'm shooting something else tomorrow i will uh, you know shoot one shot without you know make sure that the model is wearing t-shirt right through hmm. so the table is not shown and we'll do the signal so we did it in the film uh, went on air but the point i'm making is at one time doordarshan used to control all this right i remember yeah. when when fair and lovely was launched uh doordarshan said you can't use the word gorapan oh gorapan ha uh, gori nahi okay. bol sakte oh so they understood i i thought this realization of okay uh, fair skin is uh, the realization of the stereotype that fair skin is good and uh, dark skin is not good i thought that was very recent but you are saying back in the day also they were very aware no, of no, this no. Yeah, those who are Durdarshan knew that, right? Durdarshan knew that. I'm saying I'm giving you both the positive and the negative side. Yes, sir. Right, but but they did not ban the product. The, the company said, "Look, it's a registered product. It is a safe product." So, you see, you can advertise the product, but you can't say "gora pan." So, you can't say "gori." So, uh, the the company and, and the agency said, "We call nikri, nikri, nikri twacha." Oh. And that's how, if you remember the yeah. old days of you know fair, fair and lovely advertising, it always be nikri nikri pacha. So we've had this kind of you know those days was one kind of uh, you know for example uh, sanitary napkin ads cannot be put on Doordarshan till 10 p.m. Now why 10 p.m. Because yeah, by 10 p.m. the children are asleep and only the adults are watching. But the problem is sanitary ads should be seen by girls who are 13, 14, 15. That's right. And you know no point. so in a sense probably the penetration of uh, sanitary napkins were delayed by doordarshan by by about 10 years mm-hmm. uh, you know but they were allowing nirod advertising you know because of family control reason but they were not allowing so doordarshan had its own madness but those days it was largely doordarshan because the consumer could not react to your ad you know he cannot at best he could write to you he could write a letter to you or something like that they never this instant reaction you will not get right but we had problems you know for example not dur not not durdarshan or not television but there was an ad which a uh, brand of shoe called tufts uh, yes, sir. Had, uh with milan soman and uh, madhu yes. sapre 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 yes correct yes sir madhu sapre and a python whose name we still don't know <laughs> <laughs> yes correct so this became you know this is a full page ad or uh, it came in the newspaper and then it became a court case because someone filed a suit saying you know it's uh, uh, it's obscene and that became a case which ran for some 15 years in the bombay high court and and you know in, you know you go there date is given date is given so i think three or four judges changed uh, so so know. can i ask who gets the case filed against so who is the fake case filed against it's not against the actors it's against the makers of the ad right yeah yeah, yeah it's against the maker of the ad and the ad agency uh my friend uh, ashok kurian uh, had an agency called uh, ambience which which did the advertising okay. uh, madhu sapre had immigrated to canada milin soman is running in uh, worli and no one knows what happened to the python <laughs> so sir uh, in this case the brands don't get affected at all like no, you, bra- said, you know you have to fight the case now to hmm. 14 15 yeah. years brand used to go there hire a lawyer stand up and say nahi and then finally what happened after 14 years or something the I think that was a public interest thing. Someone had filed a case, mm-hmm. and uh, the court finally threw it out. I think what is this nonsense? Throw it out. You know, fifteen years you can't mm-hmm. be fighting. Yeah. Throw it out. Okay. Thank God. So wow. we've had we've had those kind of problems. You know, advertising is has had you know, and if you go back to the Nehruian age for a particular period, yes, government said advertising is a waste of money. So let us tax the bloody fellows who are advertising, right? And we had to pay companies which advertised had to pay an extra tax mm-hmm. on the advertising expense. Yeah. So we had all kinds of crazy, uh, you know, uh, uh, situations uh, uh, in our country, and I think uh, the current, of course, the current spate of uh, negative feedback is is a, is a new record. I think uh, we are all developing very thin skin, and we're getting yeah. thinking of, you know, you know, upset. Any anything can destroy our society. You know, our girls can get destroyed, our boys can get destroyed. Yes, Anyone, you know. But in reality, advertising cannot destroy anything. It's a thirty-second piece of stuff, right? I mean, yeah. it doesn't really change society. Society changes because of social reformers, because of religious leaders, uh, because of maybe politicians, maybe because of popular culture like movies and, and TV shows can change society. But a thirty-second ad is is not really going to change society. Yeah. Sir, I had a question to this. Uh, this is not about advertising, but this is uh, like you said, you know, about PILs being filed against. 
uh, the models, the agencies, the brands. Uh, so lately, you know, there have been controversies around the brand, uh, which let's say are service-oriented brands. Let's say you're a Zomato. Uh, a delivery guy goes out there and does something and he's been accused of, you know, molesting by a customer, especially by female customers. And, you know, it's, it's gone viral on social media. He's being arrested and taken to the police. How does a brand like Zomato respond to, a, you know, a query like this, uh, you know, which uh, where it's uh, delivery boys involved in this. And, you know, it has nothing to do with advertising or such, but this is more of, a, you know, crisis management. You know, the video has gone completely viral on social media. And, you know, the guy was not guilty in the end when we, yeah. actually it was being investigated. But, you know, without any reason, he was tracked to the police station and uh, questions were being asked around. And nothing happened to the girl. She just posted a video on social media uh, I think saying that, you know. Forgive me if I'm wrong, sir. I think what a brand will go through at this point, if something like this happens, when something like this happens, what Vishal said, is they just can try their best to be mindful of both parties because they don't know at this point what... Uh, who's in the right. So they have yeah. to be mindful of both parties, try to uh, minimize the the bad press that they're getting because of this situation and just file for an investigation because the investigation is the only thing that will basically let them go scot-free or put them more in uh, bad waters, basically. Yeah, you know, when it comes to this kind of an issue, which is really a poor service, you know, the the, the real playbook is what United did. Or should have done, but did not do. So there is this famous video, you can find it on YouTube, called United Breaks Guitars. Right? Uh, this happened, I think, 10 years ago. So this musician had booked his guitars, uh, you know, uh, on United Flight. And then uh, and then when he landed in, wherever he landed, I think, wherever Chicago to Minneapolis or whatever, when he landed, he found that the guitar is broken. Oh, no. And he had put it in a proper, you know, cover. And obviously, they had thrown it. And so, he went and told someone, look, my guitar is broken. What is United going to do for me? We said, oh, we can't do anything. We can't do anything. So, he wrote to them. He sent them email. He sent them photograph. Six months later, he recorded a song saying, United Breaks Guitars. And it became a viral sensation in 10 days. Sorry, so how, how long back was this song? 10 years, 10, years, ago. 10 years ago, right? Yeah. 10 years ago. Oh, yeah. so you can you can search for it. It's you know, if you search for United Breaks Guitar, there's this lovely little song. It's a really, really very unknown musician. Yeah. But you know, the video became a hit. And and they and analysts said because of that video, United lost several hundred million dollars of his market cap because of that video. Now the, the the guy probably would have, you know, accepted a fifty dollar check or something like that. You know, I mean you could have easily satisfied him because yeah. first of all, if he had packed it in a proper box and if it looks like a guitar, you cannot throw the guitar. You need to move it around carefully. So yeah. the point is, if such a crisis happens, the playbook is first of all, say we are sorry if it happened, but we will find out what happened. Yeah. React. React quickly. In this yeah. case, United just did not even react. So, so no, 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 no. Right. So if this happened to Zomato, I'd say, look, we are sorry to hear this. We will investigate what happened and we will make sure the guilty is punished. That's a very neutral thing. Uh, and, and and that should that should take care of 90% of, of the complaints, right? But of course, people will keep jumping up and down. Let them jump up and down. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, you know, there's this funny, uh, you know, I was in, you know, when when Maggie was, Maggie was under the crisis, right? That mm-hmm. the entire lead and all that crisis. Yeah. And someone from Redoop.com called me and I, I gave an interview about about how what a great brand Maggie is, how it has grown, it has changed palettes, it is, and I and I some I think I made a comment that uh, I think Maggie is perfectly safe, right? And that was put as a headline of the interview, and you can find the interview on on Google uh, on on Reader.com even today. But you know, a day after the interview appeared, the journalist called me and said, "Sir, uh, have you seen the your interview?" I said, "No, I'm not." She said, "You know, there are 95 comments in that interview." Yeah. Uh, I said, uh, what do they say? Say They say you've taken money from uh, Nestle. Redoof has taken money from Nestle. You're pitching for the Nestle account. You've been paid off, stuff like that. So what should I do? I said, don't do anything. Let it be. I said, I said, I said look, the headline may be a little too controversial. So just mm-hmm. say, Ami Parshan says, I've enjoyed Maggie right through my life or something like that. Don't say, you know, who am I to say it is perfectly safe? So let's not yeah. put that. Think yeah. I've enjoyed it all through my life and I love mm-hmm. it. Okay, that's enough. A year later, the same fellow who criticized me, maybe the guy 
you know, going and you know, buying Maggie from the neighborhood shop. That's true. That's absolutely true. So, yeah. So this is mob mentality, right? When someone yeah. starts attacking, and then you everyone uh, starts piling on. So that's that's uh, we are living in that world. We got to brands have to be aware of that, you know. So quickly react. Say I will find out more, and then if you really find out something is wrong has been done, apologize. So what do you think the ratio is between actual offense and forced offense? Taking forced offense. Because that's the thing also where people are like, oh, people are told, okay, you should be offended at this and then they get offended because they are told that they should be offended. I think, I think a large part of it would be of the second category. Hmm. Right? I mean, for example, I don't think just because by seeing a, a surf ad, all Hindu girls are going to go, go to run away with Muslim boys. But, yeah. but someone tells you, no, no, it's very offensive to our culture. So I will also say, you know, boycott surf. I mean, there was recently... Um, the trending thing saying boycott Mintra. Why mm-hmm. boycott Mintra? Because From the logo. Little, yeah. Not logo. Uske baad. So there is a little visual uh, of, uh, you know, Krishna, I think it was Janmashtami there. Okay. Krishna mm-hmm. offering sari to, to Draupadi and there was a Mintra logo there saying Draupadi could have ordered the sari from Mintra. Now, the truth is that this was not done by Mintra and yes. this happened three years ago. This was and done by like a fan or something, you mean? Yeah, yeah, some fan oh, made Some guy like you, Antrik, some guy like yeah. you sitting and doing nothing, creates one little image, puts <laughs> all over the corner, okay. uh, and, and, and posts it, right? And Mintra had said, sorry, we didn't do it. Now, yeah. tomorrow, I think what brands have to be very careful is to also monitor where is my brand being used. And if you find that someone puts up something with my logo on it, just tell them, please take it off. Or put a public message saying, this is not done by us. You know, this is not our work. Right? So, which is why whether you're, you know, whether today, uh, as a rule, even if you as a brand do not have a Facebook page or a LinkedIn page or a Twitter page or Instagram account, even if you have nothing, you have to monitor all of them for finding out if someone is posting some stuff about your brand. So, you can react. Yes, absolutely. That's a bare minimum as a brand you have to do. Sir, also what I, I think I've realized more recently than not as recently is that anything that has a religious tinge to it, so it can be ads, it can be song, it can be movie, show, anything. Anything that has like a religious angle to it or something that yeah could be taken as religious never goes down well in India. Almost, almost exclusively never goes down well in India, I would say. Is that is that a right statement to say? You think? I you know I think you know uh, if you look at American advertising, mm-hmm. they've stayed away from religion completely. Yeah, you know because you know uh, you may not know, but you know in India we are doing caste census. You know, asking census. You know, we're asking for caste, etc. But in America, they don't even ask for the religion of a person in their census. Why? Because it's privacy issue. You know, why should I tell you my religion? Right. So yeah. huge. Problem. So in India, we've been playing fast and easy with religion for a long, long time, right? Mm-hmm. And so maybe it's coming to bite us in the butt. Uh, uh, and 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 it's you know, and the fact that uh, pandemic has made us more sensitive to all this stuff, right? I mean, yeah. we've become extra sensitive to everything. You know, insulting women, insulting men, insulting Hindus, Hindus insulting Muslims, insulting. Christians insulting this, insulting that. Anything can become an insult. Mm-hmm. And what you think is is perfectly okay uh, becomes a huge issue. Like uh, there was a Tanishk ad of, uh, yeah, of which, which became a big issue. And I, and I yeah. uh, you know, I was teaching a class at SPJMR. I'm, I'm also uh, an adjunct professor. And and we discussed that ad. And one of the students in the class is a, is a Muslim uh, from Kerala. And uh, and he said, look, I am, my, my wife is Hindu. And, you know, when she was expecting, she felt that her parents would like to do this. Mm-hmm. And he said, we did it. We arranged it. And we actually had that, you know, uh, that good Barai thing. Yeah. Uh, we don't believe in it, but since my wife wanted it, we did it. So it was, in fact, the ad was very true to what I did uh, for my wife. So I think there's nothing wrong. But I said, so why did people react so much? So he said, we, we don't know. Maybe people reacted uh, because it was not. For example, if they had put a little disclaimer there based on a real life incident from uh, uh, Kochi or whatever. Yes, sir. Right? 
maybe maybe the reaction would have been more tempered, uh, and and maybe if they'd gone full bang on TV, right, uh, there'd be enough positive or negative voices so that you know yes, react. So they went. They kind of gently tested by putting it on YouTube, and they got hammered, and they had to withdraw. Plus, it was also became uh, very toxic because you know they are a jewelry company and they are Diwali and and people were, went to their store in in some yeah, city and printing stones at the stores and all. Uh, yeah, they did all that, yeah, so the company had to withdraw. Otherwise, I think yeah. Tata's, especially the Titan, does a lot of these kind of edgy edgy yep, uh, advertising. Right. They believe they believe rightly or wrongly that. You need to push the social agenda and all your all your advertising messages, whether it is Tata Tea, Tata Salt, uh, Titan, Tanish. They try and push that, but here they had to retreat very quickly, and and you know they got criticized for that. They got criticized by people for, saying, "Why yeah, did you correct. retreat? We should have, you know, so, uh, are, are, you know, I don't want your people. I don't want my employees to get injured." Yeah. Right. So, so like, I'm, I'm yeah, employees' wrong. families are getting th- death threats. Among that is just next yeah, level of that. Some of it, yeah. Yeah, some of it is also exaggerated, but, of but course, whatever, yes. you know, I mean, I said, look, I mean, we are on a point. I, I, so today when you make an ad, you've got to be extra sensitive uh, about what, what you're doing and what the reaction could be, positive, negative. And, uh, uh, you know, we were not, you know, we, we've made ads in the past where, you know, you had a, a Rishi, uh, I mean, a, a sadhu kind of a guy playing, you know, hooky. Now, I don't know whether I'll do that today. Yeah. You know, some will say you're making fun of Baba Ramdev, you know, so there was an ad we did for, Amul Mithai made, which was pretty funny, where this is, you know, anyone comes and asks for anything and this guy will hand over Prashad, you know. You know, he'll give whatever, this sweet, that sweet. And you actually find that there is a kid sitting under the sadhu who's making all this and sending it up through a little lift. So he was a fake. But then, he, will you do it today? I don't know, you know. Yeah, probably not. You may say you're making fun of uh, so, Ramdi Baba or something like that. So you so, may not. So do you think something like the Milan Suman ad you were talking about, the Tough Shoes ad, or uh, the DD ad you were talking about, the one with showing the navel, that can be made today? Or would that be taken offense today also? I think the navel ad is, can be made today. Yeah, you know, navel ad, okay, sure. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Navel ad can be made today, but I think the Milan Soman Madhu Sapre ad will definitely get into trouble. I think even mm-hmm. today, it will definitely get attacked uh, mm-hmm. for showing excessive nudity. I mean, the point is they were selling shoes. Yeah, correct. So, they don't. Yeah, what the hell is what the hell is nudity got to do with? You know, but it catches it, your attention. I understand why they did it, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the, the Milan Soman likes to run. I think nude also. That's true. I mean, yeah, that's true. true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. That's so true. Oh god. Ah, uh, but sir, uh, as you said, like you know, if you make an ad on a sadhu with a sadhu right now. And people might get offended, thinking you're making fun of Baba Ramdev. So is it like that? Whatever you make. Right now in 2021, people are going to compare it to so and so influencer that okay, these guys are making this ad because they are making fun of this. These guys are making this ad because they are making fun of this. So like, has it people uh, like you know has it uh, advertising uh, be made like that? People have gone to comparing it to every influencer. Let's call it influencer if you know particular field. So has it gone this way? Ki whatever you make, no matter even while at the making, you had no intentions. Okay, we are going to make this ad, but once you made it and people like oh. This is targeting this. They are promoting a social agenda or something. Something sort of those. So you got to be careful, right? I mean, that, that's what I'm saying. You know, good old days, we used to make all these fun. You know, I remember there was a, a Padri, uh, you know, Amitabh Bachchan playing the role of a Padri in a, either Rin, Rin cake or something like that, right? Now, will you do that today? You will be, will be a little more careful, right? Yeah. Uh, similarly, will you use a sadhu, you know, playing, you know, playing tricks? Uh, you will not do that. Uh, because you got to be a little more sensitive to what's happening, and you got to be—you uh, can get culture blind, which is other problem. You know, we sitting yeah. in big cities tend to see in one way, but someone sitting in a small town may see it very differently. Definitely. So you got to do—you got to get culturally sensitizing. What may be uh, completely innocuous in a, in a big city may become very offensive in a small city. And and earlier, the point was that you know television started off as a basically a Bombay Delhi Calcutta medium, right? And then it went on to other cities, etc., etc., etc. Today, uh, you know, whatever you do on TV or even on on internet is not only seen by the so-called uh, intelligentsia; it is seen by everyone. Yeah. As a result, they will take offense. Like for example, look at your own building. You know, the girl, a girl dressed in a what is it called? Uh, tiny black dress or TBD, right? Tiny black dress. 
the watchman standing there has just been freshly imported from Bihar. I mean, yeah. he will think, you know, he will think, you know, what what is she wearing? You know, she is yeah. actually going to go out and fornicate till morning, right? He will yeah. not understand that, you know, it's okay in that culture to wear that dress and go out. But so we have got, you know, in a sense, a cultural clash going on. We got to be extra sensitive to what is what is happening. Otherwise, we will keep having these problems. And we were discussing the recent uh, ad of um, Ali Abad, right? Which yeah, the ad. Yeah. Yes, yeah. No, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what's so offensive about it, but you know, it it some people took offense. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that was very you know, weird. Yeah, correct. Yeah, if you go back, you know, Tanish did an ad with this uh, guy getting married to a to a dark skinned girl who's actually a mother of a little child, right? And they do satfere, and even that that little girl uh, is picked up by the uh, bridegroom, and the, you know, today someone will say, "How can you do satfere for a second wedding?" Right? Second meeting yeah, So some of these things, you know, in advertising we have this concept of suspended disbelief. You expect consumer not to believe everything they see in advertising. But they start seeing everything, then you say, yeah, you gotta better watch out, you know, what you do. Can propaganda ads be deemed controversial as well? Like say military propaganda, uh, Kisan welfare propaganda, you know, those kind of ads. Couldn't they be controversial as well? Because you are kind of misleading the public. Uh, that's not what how it is. There's a lot more. You don't show the bad parts or not the bad parts, but the the more difficult parts of that job of those jobs, kind of. And the recruit the recruitment campaigns in a way. Recruitment campaign for military, you know, has, has always been uh, uh, very widely applauded around the world. Sure. You know, uh, I think uh, British uh, Army had some great recruitment ads, uh, which were actually a series of ads. What happens? What happens? What happens? You know, it, it was a it was a global uh, award winner and all that. It was pioneering for its time. Saying, this is what has happened. What what will you do if you were in the military? You know, will you walk yeah. left or right? You know, so it had a whole series of things. And to say that, look, to be in the military, you've got to be intelligent. It is not just muscle. You've got to have brains. Yeah. You've got to be able to think. So, uh, a lot of military advertising is not just to say, Gungo, you know, uh, go and uh, fight for the country, but it's a great profession because the problem is that military tends to attract, quote unquote, I would say, the less affluent, the less intelligent yeah, type. Sure. Which yeah. is why you go to go to go to you know in in um, in Israel, uh, they have this compulsory military uh, you know tenure, right? You have yeah. to go and spend two or three years in military. Now in Israel, uh, they have a uh, special carder in the Israeli army, there's a special carder which works on cutting edge technology. Now, this is a special carder. And actually, what Israel so, so what is a what is a carder? What does a carder mean? It, it's it's a special group in the in the okay, okay, okay. Israeli army, right? Okay. So not everyone can get into the group. So what Israeli army does is identify school kids who are brilliant, who can do coding, who can do all that. Mm-hmm. And only those kids are allowed to get into that carder. And many of them work in the army for two years or three years and they take their idea out and they do startups. Oh, wow. That's, yeah, there's that's a book nice. called, uh, There's a book called Startup Factory uh, on, on the Israeli uh, you know, startup system. So they recruit the best. And everyone goes into the army in, in, in Israel for three years. But even there, they say, look, the more brilliant type will go into the uh, the the what is called the 982 or something like that. They were a particular group, they call it. So I think, I think maybe, maybe, you know, someone will object to this fact that why are you advertising for recruiting for army? Because, you know, why are you training people to kill people? But then, you know, um, I don't think that's happened uh, because the people know that. And army also, you know, they want to glam, you know, in a sense, it's a, it's an effort at glamorizing the job. That's to okay. say it is it is not a stupid job. It's a very intelligent job. You get to operate, you know, fly supersonic jets. You get to work with tech. You get to do intelligent stuff. So it's a very challenging, Absolutely. a great, great profession to be in. Right? That's the challenge which, you know, armies around the world are fighting. 
so lastly i would like to ask you uh, there are some brands who seems like get into trouble a lot more than others uh, for whatever reason like for instance zomato uh, zomato for the last i think 3 or 4 years has been getting into yes, trouble for like multiple of their ad campaigns i, I remember the recent one was uh, about the delivery person and uh, outside rithik and katrina's houses not having time to wait for a selfie or a cake, slice of cake yeah. because they have to get to the next delivery i remember a few years back uh, they had this uh, uh, the famous mcbc campaign i don't know if you remember this they were uh, mc like was chicken, uh, uh, yeah mutter uh, like something chicken mexican what yeah, is it like chicken yeah yeah mexican and bc was, was, yeah, was butter chicken and bc was chicken but yeah. the way to attract attention was bold letters may mc bc and niche mein chota likha hai ki mexican and butter chicken so yeah what should a brand do in this case like should they be changing their advertisers should they be thinking more about the ads they're running should is this just something some public perception kind of thing that they have to deal with that uh, this brand is seem uh, to uh, is uh, i know port- they portray themselves in a way that offends people just people can't help it but get offended because they don't like the app uh, like the uh, like the product in general is that could that be like wh- what is the, what is the brand supposed to do in this case No, in this case, brand is courting controversy, right? I mean, just yeah. as tough. I mean, when they're putting the new the model on the in the newspaper, they knew it's going to be controversial. So, like uh, similarly, in 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 Zomato does MCBC, they know it'll get controversial, but mm-hmm. they're looking for you know attention grabbing effort, right? So yeah. it worked. It worked for them. People started talking about it, and and to their core target audience, which is people, the millennials, it's fine. You know, all these kind of things are fine, right? the the I problem mean, with the latest one where the uh, where the delivery boy doesn't even have the time it became more controversial because the news that delivery boys are not paid well yeah uh, there is a whole concept of being above the algorithm and below the algorithm uh, yeah. you know the all the delivery boys are way below the algorithm so the guys are literally slave driven to work yeah. and the promoters made millions of money with the ipo so these poor fellows are not being paid they don't get you know uh they don't get insurance they don't get pf they don't get pension right. they don't get anything so yeah. it's a kind of a, in that environment saying that look he will not even take a selfie with uh krithik went down very badly uh with yeah. some target audience but the target audience yeah theek hai wo jada daudta rehta hai theek hai uh may say even krithik bhi order karta hai zomato se yeah so maybe sure. you know Or so, some people can also go to the customer, uh, customer way POV. K O the customer will get his food on time. That's good for the customer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So exactly. So I, I'm sure they must have done enough testing of these ads before putting it on air. But uh-huh. uh, but you know, as a brand, um, Zomato. I mean, it's like those those uh, underwear brands. Like, ये तो बड़ा toying है. So you know, ये तो बड़ा toying is a controversial buddy uh, ad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they uh, have time to. Quote. I remember. I remember the first. ये तो बड़ा toying है and had a chimpanzee sir in it and a woman was hanging under garment uh, outside a house and there was a chimpanzee which came and took away the underwear and, and wore it and uh, it was something like you know you can't resist it or something like that <laughs> and it was like ये तो बड़ा toying है and lately if you see the you know ना rebrand किया इसको and now it has Vicky Kaushal featuring in it and there is Rashmika Mandana and basically Vicky Kaushal is doing yoga in it and Rashmika Mandana is giving cow the female like this yeah three four and as soon as you know vicky koshal stretches out while doing the yoga and his underwear could be seen the the elastic of it and then suddenly her counting goes very slow from 1 to 3 it goes to 3 3.1 3.2 3.3 i mean you know <laughs> that way and the oh, vicky no. koshal is like vishal there was a controversy yeah. because you know some other brand i don't know whether it was a trying i don't know which brand it is but another yeah. brand did a similarly sexually explicit ad mm-hmm. and these two brands started fighting you know say he has copied my ad and i have copied your ad yeah. to into advertising standard council where i think advertising council said they there nothing copy they all shitty ad to run them it's a bit like wildstone if you remember that wildstone ad yeah, yeah. you know it yeah. was wildstone ad was based on a very interesting indian phenomenon which is men will be men no 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 that was something else sorry Men will be men is very sophisticated one. Yeah, who I think yeah. Sigram Blue, Sigram Blue, ne kya tha? Sigram, yeah. yeah Sigram. The milestone is based on this really uh, terrible obsession in India, which is this Bhabi, right? So every bachelor mm. obsesses after his Bhabi, 
So this whole thing is on the spot. <laughs> Wildstorm was phenomenally successful with that really shitty ad. But, you know, they put, picked on that interesting insight that you are, you know, salivating over your uh, sexy neighbor, uh, you know, auntie. Hmm. Right, yeah, the neighborhood auntie. Right, so yeah. it's on that. So these kind of, you know, this sleazy stuff. You know, it may get criticized, but when the brand does it, they know that you know it doesn't matter if you get criticized. It doesn't matter. You know, as long as you get um, get attention of the consumer, you're okay. Right. So I think uh, that's this has been a lovely chat. Before we end, sir, can we uh, talk a little bit about your new book and your new podcast? Yeah, I think we should talk about, you know, since we're on IBM, we should talk about a new podcast, which is uh, with, with Anupam, yes. Anupam Gutra. We are doing this, uh, you know, last brand standing. We've looked at uh, six epic brand battles, you know, between Nirma and uh, Serp and Tata Indica versus Maruti, and, uh, Bajaj versus Hero Honda, Manyavar versus Raymond. You're figuring out why Manyavar versus Raymond. You should listen to the episode. Uh, of course, Britannia. Uh, versus ITC. So six, uh, six episodes. We have captured six epic battles which have been fought in the Indian terrain, and that's uh, it's been great fun doing it. And we got terrific response. Though we do it in more a conversational style, fun kind of way of thing. But we got even got you know mails from professors from business school saying you know can you give us the the transcript because we want to use it as a case. Oh wow! So, wow, so that's it's been, amazing. It's been, a, been a very good feedback. So let's. Yeah. I'd uh, love to get uh, listeners from here to check out The Last Brand Standing wherever they get their podcast from. So I just remembered like uh, in the 90s, there was these uh, there were these uh, ad uh, wars kind of. Not, not ad wars, but like uh, certain brands would make fun of other brands in their own ads. Like for instance, I remember the famous Mountain Dew and Sprite. Uh, they famously had uh, Mountain Dew would make fun of Sprite in their ads, and the Sprite would go c- c- come back with their own ads. That's just a marketing camp, like gimmick, right? That the both brands are, have, have agreed on, or is that actually they're going at each other? No, some of these are fun. You know, these Mountain Dew Sprite is more like fun. You know, you you know, like what? Um, uh, uh, there's no strategic insight in that. But you know, you look at the Tata Salt versus Captain Cook Salt. But Captain Cook Salt went after Tata Salt without mentioning Tata Salt's name by oh. saying. Yeah, ye man pasan namak. Ye aise girta hai, lekin ye Captain Cook aisa girta hai, you know. Uh, Captain Cook, therefore, is less sticky, right? Hmm. That was very clear. You know, you could make out it is it is it is Tata Salt they're mentioning, they don't mention the name. So people have, you know, used comparative advertising when you have a clearly point of difference which you want to drive home. And uh, people have even mentioned the brand name. You know, in some cases they even mentioned the brand name. In some case you know which is the brand they're talking about. Correct, absolutely. Right? Yeah. And, and Sometimes they do a very bad job of, uh, what do you call, <coughs> censoring the name of the can or something of the other brand. Uh, like purposely, they want to be able to see Mountain Dew slightly, but they want to be able to like uh, fade it also, the, the name. I've seen this in multiple things. So they pixelate it. Exactly, and then, you pixelate know, is what I was looking for. Sorry, sorry. Yes, you're right. Pixelated, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. I, I, I look forward to everyone here to listen to the last brand standing. It's yes. a, it's a, it's a fun, uh, it's a fun series. You'll enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, this is, we'll just take a short break. We'll be right back with some awesome recommendations for our listeners. So yeah, see you guys right after this break. Okay. So break. Uh, thank you so much. Sir. That was amazing. So just, we'll just be back. Uh, we'll ask you for one recommendation and it can be anything you want to recommend. Uh, it can be related to this topic. It can be unrelated to this topic also, whatever, whatever you would like. Okay. Uh, so coming back in. Like I said, sir, any no. book, web series, anything, show, anything. or anything you feel, anything. anything, song also. Okay. Okay. Um, you know, book, uh, recently I came across. No, no, so, 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 uh, I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll just come back. Sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. Uh, all right, coming back in. Three, two, one. <coughs> no, coming back in. Three, two, one. All right, and we are back uh, with some great recommendations. Let's start with Ambi, sir. Ambi, sir, what would you like us to watch or see that you have recently watched or seen? Okay, so what uh, what I've watched, um, I don't know how many of you are boxing fans, but there is this absolutely fabulous Tamil movie called Sarpatta Parambarai, which is uh, loosely based on on a on a boxing culture which existed in North North Madras, North Chennai. Amazing, absolutely amazing story. 
great boxing, great fun. Another, okay. again, Tamil is, is a series of nine uh, short films uh, produced by a friend of mine, uh, Jayendra Punjabakishan, along with uh, Mani Ratnam. Again, uh, fabulous, must watch. So I'm, I'm pushing Tamil. Uh, so what is the name of the second one you just said? Navarasa. Navarasa. Okay. Navarasa. Okay. So those are two things to watch, uh, uh, both coming from, from Tamil Nadu. Uh, what to read? Uh, recently, I came across an author called Sujata Massey, uh, who's written a series of books based on a Parsi lawyer set in the 1920s Mumbai. Uh, there are, I think, three or four, uh, three books in that series I have read. Murder in Malabar Hill and you know Bombay Prince, etc., oh. featuring a, a, a lawyer called uh, uh, Mystery. So uh, this is a present-day author, but she's writing about 1920s, or she was an yeah, old author. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, 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 no. She's a young author. She's, okay. she's award-winning. She's won awards and all that. So oh. uh, Parveen Mystery is the name of the lawyer. Uh, it's great fun, and it also gives you an insight into uh, pre independent India, pre-independent Mumbai. Those of you who are from Mumbai will, especially South Mumbai, will really love it because a lot of the places have been mentioned, Ottoman Circle, this, that, Ballad Estate, you know, Malabar Hill, is all, it's all there. So it's a great, uh, fun uh, fun book to, book to read. All right. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Those were three of sir's recommendations. Uh, Vishal, what about you? What would you like to recommend? Uh, so lately, I've started watching to this. Uh, YouTube channel, which is called the Talent Out. Uh, it's a Hindi news channel. Uh, uh, and you know, the best segment, it has their segment of another topic, a sub channel of them called Dunya Dari. Hmm. It's a Hindi thing, but they talk about the international affairs of, you know, what's going on in the world right now. So they discuss very much in detail. The best part about this is they just don't talk, about, they do talk about the current affairs, uh, why it's happening, what, when, how, and where. But they also talk, uh, trace back the history. Like why okay. it started. So yeah, it's a very good channel. Like lately the Israel and Palestine conflict was happening and you know, they narrated in such a good way that they almost spoke about the history 2000 years ago of why and where it started and you know, why it's being there. So it's a very fun channel and uh, very insightful and knowledgeable to nice. millennials like me. So do check out Lalant of Dunya Dari on YouTube. Okay. And uh, lastly, I would like to recommend uh, the movie Free Guy. Uh, it came out a couple of months back in theaters and now it has finally released on OTT platforms. Uh, it's about, uh, so it stars Ryan Reynolds and basically the movie is about uh, this person who doesn't know he's a part of a video game. In the sense, you know how every video game, there's the main character, the character that you control. And then there are characters who are NPCs, which are non-playable characters. These are characters that just yeah. exist in this world, but you can't, interact with more than their uh, already what was coded in their features or whatever. So uh, this NPC becomes sentient in a way and starts differing from his programmed path in the game. Okay. And um, so that's what the movie is about. The movie is about this guy. He realizes that he he's a, uh, that he's an NPC, but he can control the outcome in the game in various other ways. So it's very fun, very funny, uh, quite meta also. There are some very hilarious uh, Avengers and uh, yeah, some very, very funny Avengers references. So yeah, just uh, check it out. Uh, free guy starring Ryan Reynolds, whatever you want. So uh, that's, and before we wrap up, uh, I just had a quick segment, which is like, you know, one now we can quickly recommend in Snap Answers. One ad which you have liked most and one yeah, ad which you have like, oh man, I'll just like most. That can be done. Starting with Ambi, sir. Okay, so, yeah. The one ad which you have liked recently, it can be like from the past also. And one ad your friend like, yeah, what are you Recently, I liked that uh, Cadbury cricket, uh, you know, role reversal, gender reversal. I thought it was good fun. Uh, initially, when I saw it, it was a spoof. And I realized actually it's been done well. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. You know, so, yeah. it's, it's nice. Yeah. And the idea waiting to happen. And of course, there is a spoof of that uh, with, uh, with Ramdev Baba and uh, Little. Yeah. Very fine. Correct. And the second ad, which you have like, yeah, what have you made? Yeah, I, I, I just, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I, too many, can't, 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 you know, 
can't can't put my finger on any 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 um, anyone but but you know that cadbury one was nice i thought uh, it, was, it was nice okay uh, antriksh you for me uh so i can i can think of two ads like his, in historic indian ads that i love and i will i still think about them like okay see like every month month or so i'll be like okay yeah, that that was a great ad man it's make more ads like that so one of them is the the ram adwani directed happy dent ad uh the one with the muskurale the muskurale yeah correct uh, <laughs> tera man roshan mera <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah so that was i think a very fun funny ad and another one was uh, indica v2 <clears throat> the tata indica v2 had this ad back in the day about this guy who kept repeatedly punched getting punched in the face because he kept lying and uh, the only time he was not lying was when he was talking about the features of the indica v2 and that's the only time he did not get punched and uh, i thought that was very smart and very funny also so these are two ads that i, I think good you know gandhish good you remember the indica v2 ad because i was i was there when the ad got made i mean we we made oh. it yeah yeah you yeah. made it sir yeah yeah it was yeah. my brand wow. it was my brand ad was made by the guy who made this movie called loot case yeah okay. yes correct sir okay the ad oh. was directed by him yeah wow. the ad was directed by him and yeah. we had we had some hiccups making the ad but finally it turned out Uh, great fun i mean it's great fun of course the other ad i should say my one of my all time favorite is the dara jalebi ad okay mm-hmm. the the yeah. jalebi ad a little kid spotted on the railway station and and the old uh, postman uh, spots him and he says you know ramu kaka and he are bablu tum idhar baithe ho mummy to jalebi bana rahi hai and the kid says jalebi and the next thing you know the guy is you know back home right great fun i mean one of the Probably one of the best ads made. Yeah. Just a certain plugin here, as Ambi sir mentioned, Tata, as Ambi sir mentioned, Tata and Digas ad, and Ambi sir had made it. For listeners, do check out Last Brand Standing's first episode of how actually Tata was very much down in the car market, but how they launched Tata and Digas, and it you know really upgraded their sales and took over the Maruti Suzuki. As a competitor, so do check out the first episode of the yeah, especially Indica V2, uh, Indica yeah. V2, Ishal, Indica V2 actually changed the fortunes of Tata uh, Motors. Uh, Tata Motors, yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, I did not know you made that ad, so I'm very, I'm very taken aback. <laughs> that is amazing that I would talk about it, and then it will turn out to be you. That is just my blowing my mind right now. <laughs> no, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't write. You know, I was I was handling the business, right? Uh, oh, young yeah, yeah. writer wrote the ad. Uh, we identified the the filmmaker, wow. uh, and then and then uh, we made the we made the ad. Yeah. I just want to wrap it by saying, Andre is the art you know, but the artist you don't. Which yeah, is now you know the artist, correct? No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just orchestrating You're things. Orchestrating. Artists were, uh, mm-hmm. artists were. Yeah. Were. <laughs> uh, my the ads which I have liked is uh, yes. lately has been the Bisleri one, which has the camels in it. So basically, it's a scene, a deserted scene where there's an empty road and trucks are going, you know, with the uh, bottles being loaded on them, and there is a group of camels who are hunting down water. So the leader of the uh, group, uh, camel group, uh, they run after a truck and they're like, "Nee, yar, isko nii, isko nii dharna hai. Ye bisleri nii hai, bisleri samajh bani aata kya?" And then they leave that truck, and the truck driver mm-hmm. goes uh, happily. But a second truck comes, which has the bisleri bottles loaded, and then the group of camels actually go and loot it. So. Uh, They are like you know, the so the best part about this ad is like they have used uh, there is no actor in it. There is this is purely story yeah. and you know yeah. how yeah how wisely animals have been used without you know portrayed them in a very subtle way. Like even the animals know know what bisleri is like you know. किसी को अगर पानी चाहिए तो bisleri आता है because that they are branding and how best they have used the cables in it. So and also the relation like desert water that way. So that's a very good connection. And the one ad which I found very uh, This thing is like the Vimal ad. If someone has seen, uh, right now it has Ajay Devgan and Charu Kamil. Yes. Oh ago, yes, you're right. Yeah. A year ago it, it was only yeah. Ajay Devgan, yeah. and I remember IPL was on 2020 September last year, like uh, started in Dubai, and it had like this Kesar ka balla guma, and I'm like, dude, I know that you want to connect with cricket. It's cricket season. It's IPL. It's big time. You put money in your brand, but Kesar ka balla guma. It's like someone is bowling to Ajay Devgan and Ajay Devgan is hitting it like that and Kesar goes flying in the air and it's like you know Kesar ka balla guma. The Kesar flies away in the air and it lands somewhere. So just because you want to relate to cricket doesn't mean you can use any element. That no one is going to throw Kesar in the air. Like it's so uh, uh, it's so expensive. You can't uh, just take it with cricket. I love that. That's your takeaway. No one will throw cricket in the air. It's so expensive. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, we try to be more realistic, uh, you know, with your product. And uh, Vimal, I mean, I saw this a meme uh, where there were paparazzi outside Ajay Devgan's house. And uh, Ajay Devgan was uh, doing some action of, you know, calling someone. And mm-hmm. there was, uh, you know, thought written over it. Basically, he's asking the paparazzi, oh, bhai, Vimal, what's going on? So that has been like a part of his family. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, his kids getting affected by his women. Like, so that's very this thing. And now it has also Shah Rukh Khan it saying that yeah. Ab bhi zuba bolta hu. Yeah, yeah. That way. That is, and to complete yeah. them, now we have Amitabh Bachchan and Dharveer Singh. Yeah, again. In some competitive brand. Yeah, correct, correct. Uh, I saw that also. So, yeah. yeah. So lately, Pal Masalas have been the trend in <laughs> IPL season. So, uh, thank you so much, Ambi, sir. This was an amazing episode. Thank you for being on. Thank you for uh, sharing your knowledge with us. And thank you for some awesome recommendations that our uh, listeners definitely should be checking out. Guys, what are you guys doing? Go check that out. Uh, thanks, Vishal. Thanks for joining us. And thank you. Thank you, for, thank you for having me on your show. Thank you very much. Yes. Please, everyone, go uh, listen to Last Man Standing and check out all nine of Sir's books. So, you've done nine books, if I'm not wrong. And... 10 books. 10 now. Oh God, sir. Wow. That is amazing. Uh, please go check out Sir's books and his new podcast. Thank you so much, guys. See you guys next week. Bye-bye. Hi, everybody. Just wanted to ask everyone for a quick favor. We're running a brand survey right now and would really appreciate it if you could let us know what you think about the advertising on IVM. Go to ivmpodcast.com slash survey and do let us know. As part of this, we'll be selecting 10 random participants and sending them some IVM swag. So do fill out those surveys. Hey, everybody. It's been a great week on the IVM Podcast Network. On Misconduct with Raghavi and Nisha, we learn about the very famous case of Indrani Mukherjee. Not the murder, but of foreign investment violations and money laundering. It's an exciting double episode. On non Karisa Tafin, I should talk about the superfoods healthy or turmeric, its health benefits, cultural significance, economics, and much more. On Storytellers and Stories Others, Vineet is joined by Keshav Chaturvedi. He's the host of Dere Mere Rasta and a veteran photographer. He shares his journeys from photos to podcasts. On The Habit Coach with Ashton, host of Pesa Vesa, Anupam Gupta shares how one can cultivate the habit of saving. And on GBCD, find out what Sunetro and Farad's favorite picks are when it comes to the portrayal of queer sex on screen. Do follow us on social media. We're IBM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of the shows on the IBM Network, for that matter, please do tell a friend. We really appreciate that. And finally, I'd like to thank the sponsors on the network this week, Siet Cred, Banco Baroda, Quarter, and CoinSwitch Coupair. We really do appreciate the support. Namaste, this is Cyrus Brocha. I am part of the government cancel culture program to remove rubbish off all the different streams available. So what we have is all the collected rubbish we put together on our show. It's called Cyrus Says. It's on IVM Podcast. You have to watch it and listen to it. It's on our app. It's on our website. It's on the YouTube channel. It's on Facebook. There are many different ways. Don't bother me and ask me how. Uh, you have to find out. We talk to different personalities. Many of them are known. Some are just people we meet downstairs and invite them up for chai. But the point is, it's fun and it's very therapeutic. So please join in and listen to Cyrus Says. 